United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And number four is the approval of the agenda. Motion by Tom Check, seconded by Kaiser, to approve the agenda as presented. Further discussion from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number five is a public forum. Public forum provides the public with the opportunity to ask questions about or address issues included on the school board meeting agenda. General operating rules of the public forum will be determined by the board president once the number of people wishing to speak is identified on the night of the meeting. Prior to addressing the board, please clearly state your name and address. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the board at this meeting? I think so. I'll ask a second time. <laughs> Seeing no one, we'll move on. Item number six is discussion and possible decision. Quarterly update on our policies. Well, thanks everybody for calling and kind of going through these um, with us. So a number of you I've, I've met with one-on-one -on -one and some of the changes that we've made. Uh, let me just share those with you first of all. So go ahead. Steve and say the Board of Education wording. Yeah, there was a question on um, what we're doing is moving away from using Board of Education to just board. Yeah. Uh, there's a uh, one Board of Education, the understanding is that the Milwaukee Public Schools Board of Education. So uh, as we're reviewing or updating policies, we're taking off of education and making it board. I missed a couple, okay? And uh, we fixed those tonight. So Yeah, so there was, you might caught all that. Yeah. There was probably like seven or eight that we missed, and so those have been changed to just board. Okay, and what, what the reasoning is why? There, uh, one board of education, and then by statute, it's the Milwaukee Public Schools oh. Board of Education. And so, okay. Um, I didn't be correct. Well, and I, it's because I uh, worked with DC Everson, now Steve was from the business manager made that point that we eliminated anywhere it said Board of Education in all those districts' policies. We had been doing it piece by piece as a policy comes up rather than send you 200 policies with a simple change. We then had another um, suggestion besides all of those changes um, that policy 22, oh no, no, that's not the right one. Uh, 0152? Yes. Uh, there was a question on the policy on officers about what to do in the case of a tie. And so um, the board had language in its fill of vacancy policy about what happens if there's a tie. Let's say the board, it's a, a meeting at which only eight people show up or you have a vacancy so there's only eight and there's two nominees for board president and it stays four to four. You had language already, if there was a vacancy on the board, how you were going to handle a tie. So we brought over that language from that policy and see what to see what you thought about using it for this officer's piece as well. So this was the paragraph, this is Mosini language, case of a tie, the board must continue to vote until candidate receives a majority vote or until a total of three successive balloting to indicate no change. So four to four, and then there's a motion declaring a deadlock. In such cases, names are put in a hat and drawn. You remember we had that once? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so we added so that language. language. Is that okay for a tiebreaker? Mike, you suggested we have some sort of a mechanism for a tiebreaker. That's, that's what you like. Okay. Like a game and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, then let's just go down and just go through a couple of the other ones and then we'll circle back. Um, 5310. Yeah. Matt caught a wording that we had wrong. We had. I struck too quickly the <laughs> activities and Matt caught it. It's the availability of emergency nursing services on all school sponsored student activities. I scratched activities instead of leaving it. So it tells you you guys are reading these policies and people are catching, uh, catching things. 7530, um, Mike asked a question about 
we identify PCDs, and Mike said, are we outdating ourselves if we list all of those? Should we just say PCDs? My, my suggestion was we continue to list them, and we have a line at the end here where it says, or and or other when enabled devices of any type, which is the category for catching what, what could be invented tomorrow that we haven't thought of yet. The concern is if we pull these and just say personal communication devices with some examples in, in as much detail as we can, and there's an issue where there's potential discipline or something else, how, and someone says, tell me why I'm in violation, show me where you've defined what personal communication devices are, so my suggestion would be as lengthy as that list is, let's leave it for now, and then there is the catch-all of, or any other web-enabled devices. So. And he also said that for discipline reasons, that's why we, really that's why this is here tonight, to be updated, because of rather than strongly discouraged, we're saying it's prohibited. So if I had to come back and say to somebody, you know, you're receiving a letter or being dismissed or whatever the reason, we could clearly say that you've been notified that it's prohibited, not just strongly discouraged. Yeah, there were, there's two spots where you have language about use of cell phones in district-owned, board-owned vehicles. And in order for them to be, what, what we're saying is they're prohibited from their use except for navigation purposes provided the direct, those in, the directions or that was put in while the vehicle while the vehicle is not moving. So we had to be sure that we said here it was prohibited because prior we had said strongly discouraged. Whereas I'm going to jump a little bit. What that board on the vehicle though instead yeah. of district owned? I thought that was kind of strange. Popped up in two of these policies. Yeah. Um, I guess I look at it as it's a district vehicle, not a board's vehicle. But yeah. In, that comes up in some other policies and other boards have asked. Ultimately, I, I believe that everything is board owned. It's 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 under your just your jurisdiction. You made the motion to to spend the money to to purchase it, whatever. So you'll see we use board owned in a lot of spots. I heard you say district owned, board owned before. I noticed that so. And the reason, because I... You're getting used to it, too. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, okay, the other... Um, go for ahead. For transportation industry, use of personal communication devices is prohibited by federal law. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, humans being humans, they frequently break that law. The only defense that the industry knows is frequent reminders to their employees, whereas a, a policy in our handbooks won't hold up in court law. So we've always sent the memo twice a year so that if we have to have to go to court to go judge it every, every six months, he gets a reminder. Do we have anything like that in place or do we ever remind We don't, her? but I will. I'll yeah. add that to our policy update at the beginning of the year that we go through. Worth your weight in gold if you have to go. The only thing we do do is we do make them sign the handbook. But, right. Every year? Yeah. We do, and we hone them for that, just like the bloodborne pathogens. They do so electronically so that I can data mine it. So I can run a, as soon as that goes out there and it closes, I can run a report um, electronically that tells me <coughs> these five people haven't signed it, and then we can go after that. Really, and we do that for compliance to the handbook. Do the, do but, people, but I will send the memos out. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, do people who are driving the vehicles, do they uh, have their licenses on file yeah. or something? Yeah, Brent is, is that an annual? They have to do a um, background. Yeah. yeah. To, to Corey, I'm wondering if at that point there's also some sort of signature that I understand that per, sure. per policy 8605, some that prohibited from the use of cell phone, personal communication devices, except for navigation purposes. So Again, provided there. Federally, we do it because not only is the employee liable for tickets, the company can be as well. And if you have an internet accident, yeah. that's so. That's why, again, we look. Most districts have started with strongly discouraged and are moving to prohibited. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, Anything else? I think that was all that I got from 
um, your phone calls and um, appreciate that. Yeah. Do, just, and then I'll be off. Do we, we obviously differentiate between an employee who's operating their own vehicle on school business versus operating a board owned vehicle? We haven't. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering from a liability standpoint if, if Mr. Lehman's going to drive six kids to wherever or whatever the issue was, do we allow staff to transport kids or use their own personal vehicle for work related things? I mean, when you drive <coughs> working here during the day for a meeting, you're driving your own vehicle, I assume? Sometimes we do. And sometimes we go up to CESA 9, we we'll use our van. The district van. The district van. So I'm just wondering if, if our policy is falls short, if, if a staff is <coughs> using their own vehicle, should we make sure that these policies apply to them while they're using their own vehicle on company business, basically? Yeah, we, um, well you have a policy on transportation by private vehicle. And I'm wondering if that's where, if, if that's the board's desire that we wouldn't sort of crap, put that same language in there, that if you're using a private vehicle, the transportation of students, because I don't see it in there now. Well, I see it as if, if you think you're going to be covered under work camp, then yeah, this well, policy should apply to you, regardless whether you're in your own vehicle or district own vehicle. <coughs> yeah. Do you want me to do some work on that? I think it would be appropriate. So it's not just transporting kids, it's use of private vehicle on school business, right? Yeah, I mean, this one, does you don't have to have kids in the vehicle in order for this policy no. to apply, right? So, yeah, I would say it should be the same. We have a meeting with both law firms the second week of April. If we can wait till I'll bring it up at that meeting. Mr. President. Motion to approve is presented. Do we hear a second? I'll second. So, motion by Tom Check, seconded by Guy Wiss to approve the changes as presented. Further discussion from the board. So, is that uh, encompassing not only what you discussed, but all the all the items in front of us for all the policy changes? That's just a motion is for, including the new policy for expulsion. Do we want to have a discussion? Yeah. I've read it all. I understand it. Any more discussion? More discussion? We don't have. We can have more discussion. Yeah. Sure. sure. This is just a first reading, correct? Mm -hmm. No. No, because these are your current. Yeah. yeah these are revisions to your current okay. policies. So what about the new? Uh, there is an exception. There's a new one, which is 8309. Eighty three oh nine is new and it what it does is it walks you through the recent Supreme Court ruling on open meetings. Um, there was a good background piece in your folder on that. This was the case where a book was challenged, a committee is formed, basically they the parent came in, had their say left, and the parent challenged why they couldn't be there for the whole meeting. And the Supreme Court ruling was if a board is authorized to <coughs> Authorize uh, delegated authority to a committee, it's subject to the open meetings law. And so this policy, the new one, walks you through that Supreme Court ruling. What's a, what's a committee? How do you determine if it is a committee? How do the open meetings law apply? The only thing I like to point out is the last paragraph of that policy is very clear that while the board acknowledges the importance of following the open meetings, there's an awful lot of frequent impromptu meetings that occur on a day-to-day -day basis. That's not what we're talking about. Okay? But if the board... Can I, uh, yeah, we had, a good, we had a good example. So we, we, we talked about one today. What if we decide to have this board says, let's have a safety and security committee? And there's a motion, and there's a second, and the board says, let's do that. When the board says that, then that would be a part of the open meeting. Yeah, so we would notice that, we would post that, we would have an agenda. Okay? Just sure. like the personnel committee, all of those. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so we looked at your policies to see where were there potential references to committees and to be sure certain ones you uh, human growth is by statute. Uh, wellness, your wellness policy as a wellness committee that needs to be noticed and posed because the board is by passing that policy is authorized that committee and delegated authority to it. So. so going back to Diane's question, then there's three identified as new. Are we approving the first reading today, or, is, or, or um, what is the, what does our policy say? Do we have to have two readings? I believe it does. I believe any policy yeah. Any new policies? I will, I will retract my motion and modify it. And what new motion would be to approve all the revised policies presented tonight, separate of the new one. So we have a revision to the motion only include those policies noted as being revised this evening. Thank you. Motion by Tom Chick, seconded by Venus. Just one question on the revised one. Hey, and I was looking at the ones for the physical examination. Are we no longer going to have staff tested for TB? The, the legislature changed the requirement for a TB test uh -huh. to a TB <coughs> screening questionnaire subject to further tests. So rather then require everyone to have a TB test. Uh, it's now a screening questionnaire administered by its, its physician, physician's assistant, I think also nurse. And based on the results of the questionnaire, then the determination is made you need the actual test for TB. Is that new? Yes. Okay. Yep. So you mean I can get rid of it and all my staff? <laughs> Okay, if you want to call me, I have the form. Yeah. yeah. So I'll share it with you tomorrow. I mean, they're a runner. See, I have a question too. Yeah. Done. I'm done with that. Okay, sir. Um, in regards to all the uh, revised policies in front of us, out of them, all right, you identified all the revisions for it, or was there any identified that were done by administration or a combination of the two? All were on suggestion from the organization. Yes, everything that's on this list here was a revision that we <coughs> have proposed at some point. They, they reflect either that Appleton case, uh, recent legislative the Tiber TV test, start uh, the early college uh, early college credit program, there's no longer course options. It's, so they reflect changes either legislatively and some are just clean. Or and that's what that's what he'll do quarterly for you. Yep. If I would say, geez, let's change something, that I would come to you guys first about that. So his company will just come to you. Yeah. Making sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do we have a motion and a second further discussion? Can you move forward? We vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It still leaves us with the three new policies to review and discuss as a board. <coughs> Just a question, I mean, there's no motion, but all these new ones, you know, last time we always had something to compare against other districts. I didn't see that in any of my people. This, uh, if I could walk through them at 8309, mm -hmm. this open meetings for non is completely. Uh, I don't know there wouldn't be anywhere to compare it to uh, because it reflects again that recent Supreme Court ruling. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the new one on references, um, similarly, you, you, what we have here, there's, the first paragraph says that if, if someone provides a reference in good faith, they're immune from liability. Okay. The second paragraph was the result of the Every Student Succeeds Act revision of the federal law. Uh, used to be no child left behind, and now it's every student's. And in it, it said uh, an administrator is prohibited from providing ass assistance to someone to get a job who they have a you know, reasonable cause to believe that they engage in sexual misconduct. And so because of that, this was included in that revision, we brought the policy back forward for consideration as a new policy. So 
So it could be covered under another policy that's currently standing. Uh, in addition to. Yeah, the, the, this part about Im immunity from liability for providing a reference, would that be in another district policy? Okay. Nor would this, this the specificity of, again, sexual misconduct, you know, I, I, you know, somebody engaged in that more than likely they, they would have been dismissed, terminated, something would have happened. But there are certain cases where someone just leaves. I mean, they resign and move on, and this would say, if you have a reasonable cause to believe, you're, you're prohibited from providing assistance to them in getting another job. That's, fed, that's the federal law. And, and one of the things that's kind of different, Diane, is years ago, we would bring policies forward, and then we'd look at WASB, and WASB would send us lots of examples. And what the board has done by hiring the OI is they take care of it. And they bring forward to us. I'm not bringing forward to you. Yep. So those were the two new in here, and then you had, this was a district-specific uh, <coughs> request, and this was the pre-expulsion. So those are the three new ones, and I'll leave it to the board from there. So Dean couldn't be with us tonight, but he shared, I just shared his email about that. So Steve drafted a policy for us, helped us draft a pre-expulsion policy, that draft went to Dean, Dean did some changes, that draft went back to Dean, and back and forth about five or six times, we've come to this final thing, and Dean um, could not be here tonight, but said that he's comfortable in recommending this. I only had one thing that I, I support this policy, but it, one of the things that you say you go through when you're meeting with the student is to ask them, if they knew, uh, give me just a second. If they knew what they were doing was against the rules and and what the consequence would be and what the consequences of violating that rule are, uh, if you knew the school's rules and consequences for such, <coughs> excuse me, for such action, I, unless there's a legal reason that these kids have to know what the consequences are for every violation that they would do, I would strike the for such or consequences. Were you aware of the school's rules? Yes or no? I think that's a reasonable question to ask a, a student. But I, I'm not really concerned whether they knew it was a, a possible expellable offense. But if we put it in our policy, then someone's going to assume that that's, that them being found guilty or whatever is contingent upon how they answer that question. Is it kind of a moot question anyway? Because they signed the code of conduct as a student, so that should be well understood. Even though I know it might um, just be a quick signature. Yeah, tell them why we ask these questions. Yeah, in, if you, most expulsion hearings, these are the questions that you're walking through. And the second one is really designed to, and that's where I'm assuming your kids are signing, or, or there's some way of verifying they've got it, they, they knew what that was. And I, I'm with you. Now, I don't know that they'd be able to say three day suspension or five day <coughs> suspension. Would they be able to say, I knew if I punched so and so in the face, I was there was going to be discipline. I think most kids would acknowledge I knew something was going to happen. I mean, could they again? Could they tell you the specifics? But but again, from the what, you, what you're walking through is I knew ahead of time there was a rule about that, and potentially something was going to happen. Yet my conduct, I did it any not not I did it anyway, but I. I, I engaged in that conduct, knowing that it was, it was wrong. That's what well, you're after. Good, bad. Yeah. I said, well, it, 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 were you aware that there would be consequences, I guess, right? Well, they should be, otherwise right. you're giving them ignorance as, a, yeah. as an innocent. And you don't want to do that. Yeah, there's consequences for that action because they, they, did, they did sign the handbook, so. Like, I would just put, this isn't a Neola policy. This is a, we worked on this together mm -hmm. policy, so. Well, it's a brand new concept for us, so mm -hmm. that's why we're just yep. a little bit to look at it. The one that I mentioned at the last meeting had to do with the zero tolerance and discipline policy, and uh, I think there's going to be some action to take to bring back the board. Is that going to come around on the next time around, or? Sure, which one? The discipline and the zero tolerance and his suggestions of 
going maybe away from the zero tolerance. Okay. And actually, I believe it would complement what you have here for a policy. I'll bring that forward to him. And then at our next. Is that handbook language? Um, no, it's the policy, and Dean suggested when he met with the board to kind of start drafting this, he suggested some changes to that as well. Do you know what policy has zero tolerance um, in the discipline? It's in the desk. Right? Oh, it could be the handbook. I'll, take, handbook. I'll take a look at that. Okay. I'll take a look at that. Because Dean had some suggestions, you're right. <coughs> Further discussion from the board? Does anyone want to put forth a motion to adopt the first reading of these three policies? I didn't want to do it again. Make a motion to approve three new policies. I'll second. So, motion by Tom Check, second by Dee Wiss to approve the first reading of these three new policies. Where does that language specify that C? Your board, it'd be in the board bylaws. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second. Further discussion from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Brings us to item number seven, which is future agenda items. We can talk about that now or at the full board meeting in an hour. And Anyone have anything? Otherwise, we'll move on to item number eight, which is adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Motion and second to adjourn for discussion. Any then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. We'll see we Steve again in summer. Summer. Thank you so much.